The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Welcome to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between viewer and entrepreneur. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and today we are joined by Matthew Mahorn of Gangster Cheese. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what is Gangster Cheese? What is Gangster Cheese? That's a, that's a great question. Um, Gangster Cheese was really an opportunity that I went for. Um, I worked for a previous employer where I kind of found myself doing something that I shouldn't be doing and uh, saw the behind the scenes, working with food, seeing the business aspect of it, and asked myself, why, why can't I do this myself? And uh, started it, you know, 2015, went for a big leap of faith and started my own business venture of Gangster Cheese. And what exactly is that business venture? So what are you producing? That is a great question. <laughs> um, Gangster Cheese is uh, more than grilled cheese. A okay. lot of people look at Gangster Cheese and say, oh man, th that's, that gangster, that's that gourmet grilled cheese food truck. They do fries, poutine, wings, mac and cheese, uh, all that comfort food. Uh, stuff, but really, I like to say we're more, we're more than that. Um, so, gangster cheese definition is basically one who provides, one who provides for themselves, their family, provides opportunities for others, and friends, and also provides for their community. So that's something I wanted to expand upon for what gangster cheese is. Um, and when people see that through me, that means. I've kind of done my job in that aspect. So you're tackling the negative connotation of the word gangster exactly. with your business and providing a service that is just more than gourmet grilled cheese. You're kind of working to break a stigma, if you will. 100%, 100%. Um, having people look at, especially people that I can relate to, um, seeing kids that look like me, growing up in a place like Whitby, there's not a lot of young black entrepreneurs that, uh, at least during my time growing up, I never got to see a lot of people looking like me that I could say, hey, that person looks like me. I could do that when I'm older. Um, not knocking any other sure. race, you know, um, doing their thing, but it means so much when you're able to see that relationship, that someone that you could relate to and when young kids um, see that, it means the world, that they have some steps to, to follow. Um, now having three kids of my own, uh, it means the world to me to leave a legacy, right. leave those footsteps that they could follow, and uh, yeah, yeah. Do you find that it's a pressure situation to be in for yourself. You're trying to make your business and make it successful while also trying to be a role model and a pillar for, you know, combating the stigma of being a gangster, if you will. Is, yeah. is that tough? Um, it's extremely tough. Um, you know, let's go back to my elementary school days okay. where a lot of kids used to call me dude, you're so, you're so white, you know what I mean? How do you not know all these rap songs? Or um, why aren't you the greatest at basketball? Or, you know, why do you talk like that? Okay. Um, now, I'm, my parents are Jamaican. So when they came to this country, Canada, they had to change a lot of things about themselves so that they can kind of fit in. And especially with jobs, whatnot, um, they were able to make that process a bit easier. You know, drop the accent, drop certain things that they brought um, from back home with them. Sure. Uh, so when kids said those things to me, I I'm, I'm fine with those. But it's the other kids that aren't as strong who, when they hear these things, um, oh, why don't you know 
this rap song? Uh, why do you wear your pants up? <laughs> why do you talk proper English? Why do you, why are you smart? You know right. what I mean? That hurts me thinking of those kids who think, you know what, I can only be one thing in my life. Um, and obviously, you could be so much more. You could literally be whatever you want to be in life. I know that's a little cliche, but whatever you work, whatever you set your mind to, you can go out and get that. You know what I mean? Whatever you want in life, you could literally go and get um, if you set your mind to it. And I want to be that anchor to those kids to say, okay, that kid, that guy isn't acting like that stereotypical gangster. He's mm -hmm. not acting like that stereotypical black male um, where he could only be X, Y, and Z. He could be the whole alphabet if yes. he wants to be and, and so much more. So that's my main goal and opportunity that I'm using with Gangster Cheese. And I think it's incredible because you're not only looking at bettering yourself, creating a legacy for your children and creating a sustainable business, mm -hmm. you're looking at this as an opportunity to rewrite a narrative and to help others achieve goals that maybe they didn't know that they mm -hmm. wanted to have. Achieve, and then they yeah. see somebody like you and go, okay, wait, mm -hmm. if he this. can do it, yeah. perhaps I can do it too. Exactly. And I don't think people realize how significant that is until they see somebody who has that for them right you know you see that person that you you go oh i could be like them and then you get everybody else who's trying to be that quote role model as well mm -hmm. i think that's incredible so let's talk a little bit about how gangster cheese has actually come to life so originally you started as a food truck going to different festivals and events yeah yeah and even before the food truck you could even back up i started off with a flat top uh, flat top spatula and a warmer um, and actually Port Perry uh, working with Jack and Sherry at Old Flame they were one of the first people who believed in me or gave me a chance okay. actually um, in a commercial setting uh, I did a lot of cheese pairings there where we'd use different types of cheese in grilled cheese um, and pairing them with beer and whatnot or different styles of drinks and we'd, feel, f we'd feed the entire um, brewery and whatnot and do special events. And prior to that, to Jack giving me that opportunity, I'd call up my friends, because now I'm at the, the time of my life where some of my friends are starting to get married, uh, open houses, sure. like um, you know when they first, their first houses they've, that they've bought, um, where I would literally, hey, do you want me to come and cater um, mm -hmm. your housewarming? Uh, I'll bring my food and whatnot. <laughs> let me showcase my skills. Exactly, exactly. I wouldn't charge them anything. I'd just say, you know what, let me, let me bring my food. Um, let me bring my flat top and cook for them. And everyone's having a good time. The food kind of spoke for itself. Everyone loved it. Uh, even family events where Thanksgiving, Halloween, Easter, I would, and that's kind of where the whole, because with Gangster Cheese, we've kind of changed the game on grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. So anything you could think of inside of a grilled cheese, we could do it. So Thanksgiving, we got stuffing, turkey, gravy, all inside of a grilled cheese, even some mashed potatoes too. Um, we could do a taco grilled cheese, any type of, you know, for Cinco de Mayo, or anything uh, you could think of inside of a grilled cheese, we could do it. So yeah, I just work with the people I knew Mm -hmm. to um, bring my business to kind of get the word out. And that's kind of how it caught fire, having a great uh, friend base uh, where they kind of spread the word. And then, of course, working with great breweries as well, such as Old Flame, uh, Town Brewery, Market Brewery, um, lots, of, lots of good ones. So originally you were taking your flat top to these breweries and to these events where mm -hmm. your families and friends would yeah. open the doors to you. Then take us to the moment where you decided, I'm gonna create a food truck yeah. and start traveling with mm -hmm. this. How did you know how to do that? Um, previous employer, great employer I used to work with, Smokes Boutinery, Ryan Smolkin, who runs that uh, out of Ajax. Uh, I was doing a bit of HR operations for them um, and found myself doing 
put it this way, long story short, I was running a restaurant and a food truck downtown Toronto. Growing up, I've always been in um, a food setting. Worked sure. at Denny's when I was 15 years old. Uh, I lived in Alberta for two years doing, working at a small restaurant out there. Always had my, my hands in food, even from a young age, probably 10 years old. I love to eat. I love, <laughs> <laughs> you probably can tell, but I love eating uh, large amounts of food. I love eating in general. And I was always in the kitchen with my mom. And uh, her teaching me basic kitchen skills um, and recipes are things that I've incorporated to recipes I have today right. um, on the truck. And um, yeah, I, I kind of used all those things that I used in the past to, you know what, let's, let's do this food truck and bring it uh, Canada wide, Ontario wide, and eventually maybe bigger. Um, so yeah, just using things that I learned from previous employers and learning the whole system. You know, HR is my background, so I kind of had that business aspect, sure. administrative and whatnot, and then the food aspect um, growing up around food. I kind of used that and put them together and said, yeah, let's do this. Okay. Yeah. So then you're learning through trial and error and previous experience. You have a food truck running. Then I believe some point in the journey, you transitioned into an actual restaurant for a mm -hmm. while. Yeah. What was that jump like? Um, that was a big wake up call. Okay. Um, it was a great experience. I love that restaurant so much, downtown Whippy. Um, we were one of, well, I feel like we were the spot to go to after the bars, all, you know, the young adults, uh, bar hopping, uh, a lot of the local pubs. Um, you had Hops House who were directly across the street, Tap and Tankard. So we were open till around 3 a.m. So all the kids, young adults, would come to our establishment after to get that comfort food um, till the wee hours of the night. So what sparked that idea of the restaurant was having people, because we, we kind of blew up, especially in the Durham core, where people didn't always have the opportunity to find us at the Rib Fest, Food Chuck Frenzies, right. or certain cash events, public events. Uh, so I wanted to establish uh, a stationary location where people could just come to us and find us any time of the week. Um, and thinking, oh man, if we could feed, we do events like Boots and Hearts, right. Veld Music Festival, where we're feeding 5,000 people mm -hmm. in three days. If we could do this, then a restaurant would be so easy. Well, you know what, Matt, <sighs> on that note, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll hear about Matt's attempt to open his restaurant. is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Welcome to the set of Modern Business. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy. And have you ever wondered what the story behind the business is? On this show, we'll be talking to young, up and coming entrepreneurs, market makers, and philanthropists hearing the story behind their career journey and getting their trade tip. Join me exclusively on Rogers TV for Modern Business with Taylor Bercy. Get the popcorn ready because Mark Winegus brings layered butter to the next episode of Cinema Scene. Also, writer-director Charlotte Wells reflects on After Sun. It's gonna be a good one. 
Hey, I'm Chef Corey Dern, host of a show on Rogers TV Georgina called Cooking with Corey. Join me bi-weekly for brand new episodes where I teach you not only what to cook, but how to cook. The only thing missing is smell-o-vision. That's Cooking with Corey right here on Rogers TV Georgina. Watching Rogers TV. Welcome back to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between viewer and entrepreneur. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and we are here with Matt from Gangster Cheese. So before the break, we were talking about how you were opening up a restaurant, a mm -hmm. storefront location in Whitby. And I believe you were saying you thought it was going to be a lot easier than it was. Yeah. So walk us through your trials and tribulations with that. Uh, well, number one, uh, overhead. Uh, my hat goes off to uh, all all the restaurant owners out there, and the over. Well, we're coming from downtown Whitby, so thinking of places like you know in the city, Toronto, and other downtown cores where their rent or their mortgage is much higher than what ours were. Um, you got your labor um, and just the uh, other miscellaneous expenses that are involved with such a big space. We were a full service restaurant, 5,600 square feet. Wow. Full bar. Um, I believed we could seat up to 300 people. Um, it, was, it, was, it was intense. So it was a big wake up call from the food truck where I was saying kind of, we were used to doing 5,000 people in three days where, you know, okay, that's easy. If we, if we could do that, then we should be able to do a restaurant no problem. People are sitting down, getting their drink. We'd, we're good to go. But it's the people calling in sick. <laughs> it's your um, delivery truck being delayed. Snowstorms where, um, you think people are going to come in, but due to weather, you know, you, uh, you have no seats, uh, no people coming in to sit down. Uh, so it's, it's so many different variables on uh, what you have to deal with. Also having three little kids, one thing I didn't think about transitioning from the food truck to a uh, stationary location was the time I'm needed to be at um, right. the establishment. So food truck. You know, we're doing a wedding for three hours, four hours at most, uh, whereas the restaurant, I was there from 7 a.m. prepping to 3 a.m. <laughs> the next day. So I never got to see my kids, never got to see my wife um, or the rest of my family. Missed out on a lot of uh, family events and whatnot. Uh, so that was, that was a big wake-up call. That was pretty tough to deal with. Uh, especially being young as well, you want to obviously enjoy these times, especially with your kids. Um, with being self-employed and being an entrepreneur, of course, these sacrifices come with it. But you got to know when to really, you know, Drop step the off the gas, and, you know, find that boundary and work that uh, work-life balance for sure. So yeah. what happened to the storefront? Well, it was kind of perfect timing, I call it. Um, great experience. Then COVID came, and that kind of changed everything. Um, I was already debating the amount of hours that I put into that restaurant. I had to make a decision. And with COVID coming, it was kind of my perfect You're out? out. You know what I mean? It didn't make sense to continue at that time because of what everything was going through. And that's another reason why I tip my hat to a lot of the restaurants that made it through the, the pandemic as well, um, because the things they would have to fight through and the different hoops and obstacles was crazy. Um, 
to answer your questions about challenges through the, that transition of closing through the pandemic, it wasn't a time for me to kind of hang my head and give up, um, which kind of showcases what being an entrepreneur and self-employed is all about. You have to have that resilience to, to keep going and find that, um, that drive <laughs> literally every day. Um, and instead of hanging my head and pouting, which I may have done, <laughs> may or may have not done. Naturally but for a exactly, couple minutes. Yeah. I kind of had to think outside of the box and I started operating like an ice cream truck per se, where I'd post on my social media saying, okay, I'm going to be at this subdivision. I'm going to be at this court, this building on this date. If you'd like to order, um, give us a shout, shoot this number and, um, That's cool. Yeah, we'll text you back with your, let us know when you want it, and we'll text you back that your order's ready. I didn't realize <laughs> how viral <laughs> that uh, would have gone. And it's crazy because that caught on all across Ontario. Other wow. food trucks started to doing, other food trucks started to do it. Um, and I don't want to take credit for like other locations, but I came up with the idea of setting up food trucks at a mall. I won't name the mall, but um, literally, I think about a month later after I came up with the idea, there were food trucks at a mall. Okay. All, well, one mall, and then it caught fire. There are food trucks doing a stationary kind of corral. Um, not the Oshawa crowd. <laughs> say that. You're not taking credit for that yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. They were already established. They're doing their thing. I love going to them as well. Um, but specifically malls, there'd be at least 10 trucks set up in the parking lot huh. where people were able to come and uh, get their food. Um, so that was kind of how I navigated through the pandemic, just thinking outside of the box and how could I get people to find me safely as well through this through that time. That's very unique and yeah. definitely a great marketing tool to use mm -hmm. your social media to kind of fuel your business, yeah. especially during a transitional time like that, mm -hmm. because you, you're right, you alluded to it. You could have hung your head and said, oh, I can't believe it didn't work. I thought it was going to be amazing. It wasn't right for me. It doesn't seem like you did that. It seems like you took a second, took a deep breath and went, okay, let's go back to my roots. Yeah. Let's figure out how I can do this. Yeah. And now you've got something that's sustainable and successful. So is that kind of where Gangster Cheese is now? Is you're back on the food truck scene, working towards going back into catering, or where do you see Gangster Cheese going in the next couple of years? Man, where do I begin? <laughs> um, the face of Gangster Cheese has changed so much. We're six years now, which is crazy to think about. And where we are now, I'm planning on actually rebranding. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exclusive. So we've always been known as, you know, the core items, grilled cheese, the fries, the poutine, mac and cheese. But now that we've, you know, come to this success per se, we've started doing plated weddings. Okay. where people have requested us to do more than our core items. You know, obviously we're a food truck, we have a full kitchen, we're able to do whatever the client pretty much asks us to do. So now a lot of the cooks that we work with, um, that are part of the team, they're able to showcase what uh, they're able to do. We got Jamaican, Chilean, Mexican, Indian. We could do whatever um, the client pretty That's much asked us to, exactly. So for us to expand out of what uh, we've done for so long into a new group of catering, it's pretty cool. Um, so I can't wait to show the people what, uh, what we have coming. We have a lot of, uh, we have a few different business ventures that uh, we're, we're seeping into. 
So uh, I'm excited to showcase those um, That's very soon. That's incredible. Yeah. So people who want to follow you to see those ventures, I'm assuming social media is kind of where you, you spill your news, if you will. Yeah. So where can they find you? Um, gangstercheese.ca, number one. Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, any type of updates we have, we'll definitely um, post on our Facebook or Instagram. Instagram is probably our biggest uh, medium right now. Um, and it's Gangster Cheese on social media? Yes. That's your handle? Gangster Cheese. All right. Yeah. Just want to make sure the people know where to go yeah. to follow your journey because yeah. it seems that Gangster Cheese might be moving into a new exciting direction and we're definitely going to mm -hmm. want to follow along. Yes. So when it comes to you being heavily involved in the cooking at your food truck, when you were going to the family and friends events and then opening a restaurant. You've said that your background is HR, business, running food trucks for smoke poutinery. Mm -hmm. How did you know how to cook grilled cheese and how to do it safely and follow all the guidelines? <laughs> what was that like? Yeah. Um, well, back when I was 15 years old, in regards to making grilled cheese, what makes gangster cheese gangster per se in the in regarding to food is that we do our cheese on the outside of the grilled cheese which not too many people do or know how to do um, and for some reason when I was 15 years old doing that um, that's how I made my break meal every day okay. yeah yeah I, I couldn't tell you why I used to put the cheese on the outside uh, it's just the way I liked it I like the way the <laughs> crunch um, each bite I took I love that and then meeting my wife in uh, 2015, she really likes grilled cheese. You know, that was definitely uh, a staple meal of ours. We'd eat it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And uh, she started to see, when I would play around with the, the grilled cheese um, for some of our meals, we would, um, she definitely, she, well, she fell in love with the food and would say, we, we got to start something of our own for sure, you know, because this is amazing. So now do you have a trade tip for our audience today? A piece of advice that has resonated with you, a piece of advice that you'd like to give to someone else or just a general tidbit of business information you want to share with the world? Man, I have so many. OK, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of things that I've learned throughout this business, um, patience. Patience number one, when I first started out, I wanted everything right away. You know, I, I felt like I had the game plan. I had all of the cheat codes. Of I course. could do this, but timing is everything. Timing is everything. Relationships are everything. Um, try, not, try your best not to burn any bridges because you never know who's in the room with you. You never know who you could be talking to and you never know what could be held in the future for you. Um, it's a lonely process. Okay. It's extremely lonely at times because no one else knows what you're capable of as much as you do. So that could be a very lonely place to right. be in. Um, one more for us. One more. Um, don't complain about too much food on your plate when you ask to eat. I love that. Yeah. And on that note, we are going to <laughs> wrap up this edition of Modern Business. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Continue to work to break the stigma of being mm -hmm. a gangster Amen. and rewrite it. And uh, we'll be following your journey. So check them out on gangstercheese.ca, Gangster Cheese on socials. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and we'll talk to you next time. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Watching hockey just got a power play with NHL Center Ice and Super Sports Pack. With up to 37 out-of-market NHL games a week, you'll always catch your favorite team no matter where you live. Whether it's big matchups you're looking for or following your top fantasy picks, it's all here. NHL Center Ice, part of the Rogers Super